If I could be a knight in shining armor, I'd be a knight of Solaris, knight of the sun, for their courage and their prowess, second to none, I hope someday. Uncle Jesse said... That is so hoax! Action! Let there be safe weapons. Lights? Thank you. Thank you, that's very nice. Today we're gonna... Is the camera on? Jeez, thank you. Okay, first... Background light. We're gonna have to redo this. No. Yeah. Oh, okay, 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 it's fine. It's fine. We'll, we'll go on from here. Today we're going to show you a few examples of some of the weapons that we've built here in GOA. I've been doing this for about five years. I happen to like the foam weapons as opposed to some people who like Shinani. I find it to be safer and uh, they're not so bad to look at as well. We have the first dagger here. It's the simplest of the daggers that we have. It is just your normal gray PVC. Uh, gray duct tape. And uh, this one has, happens to have a special feature. We have something in GOA called contact poisoning, which is flower. Here we have created a small flap so that you may put the flower inside here to hold the flower. And at this point, that is the first example of a dagger. From there, we have gone into doing wavy designs outside of the normal dagger. That music's really bad, isn't it? Okay. So, we've done it in black here, to make it look cool. We also have a malicious tip on this, because whoever wanted it wanted a really long dagger. And here is PVC, what we classify as 15 inches of PVC. We ask for no maximum more than 6 inches of foam on the tip. We've done the creative Chris design. It's something you can do with any of the weapons, from dagger all the way up to greatsword. Here, we've gone on to creating a dagger here with adding the colored duct tape, brown, red, blue, and did something creative, as well as putting a keyhole in here. For daggers only, we haven't found it to work for any other weapon, is to be able to spin it and hit yourself with it. Okay, onward! Enough to make you look foolish. We have built this one, was done by our famous friend, Sir Valiant, our Tim that we are our favorite. He has done this with all the colors of duct tape. We have here some clouds, a potted flower, yellow. Look at the unique design. We have orange diamonds, and we have a small smurf for a cameraman will come in close. Back up with it. Here you go. As you can see, it's a small smurf wheeling nunchucks. Quite a clever design from our cameraman. Okay, onward. Here are 
rolls of duct tape. You can see the different colors, orange, red, green, yellow, brown, and black. I'm sure there are others. You have camouflage, which we do not prefer you to use. We have also ran across chrome duct tape, which is too heavy to use on weapons, but it looks cool. But the chrome wears off too fast. Onward. We have short swords. Okay, as you can see, somebody will hand me a dagger. Yes, a dagger, thank you. We have the elongated version of the same item, but it is approximately six inches longer in PVC. Again, we have the long tip on it, no more than six inches. Here we've done some unique designs again. Uh, colored duct tape, brown, and we've also cut off the tip. You don't necessarily need to come to a sharp tip. We've done this as well as this one, if we had it here, had the tip that went onto this. For characterizations of people, this one happened to break into tip in a legend of a certain character. This one here, we've added to make it look like a broken polearm, as you can see of the tip, and the unique design here. And if you notice, we've done brown, silver to make it look like steel, and a very large hill. So it looks as if it's on the end of a polearm, but it had been broken. So, next we have a javelin. As you can see again, we've done a unique design. This can be thrown in our game system, as well as using colored duct tape, to enhance its aesthetic beauty. Okay, onward we have what you can do out of duct tape, duct tape and foam. We've done a dragon here. As you can see, a wing, a head. This is a hilt of a sword. We have a tail going up this, and it was an axe. So, but the person has taken the head off. So to give it, this can also be used on the end of magic users' stabs. That's a cool idea. I can show you to do some of the stuff later. We also have here a great sword made by Mario. And as you can see, the hilt here has been... Let's get a close-up of this. Okay. As you can see, the hilt here has been uniquely designed so that it covers the hand in battle and also looks really cool. And as you can see, this is a great sword. It is very wide, if you can see my hand behind it, or here. And it is not exactly all that heavy, but it is unwieldy compared to the rest of our weapons in this game. Here we have a staff. Oops. And here we have a staff. It is done with unique colored diamond, sh diamond shape of colored duct tape. And as well as, if I can find it here, a phoenix bird that somebody has done. Cameraman, have you gotten this? All right. Yes. Onward. Here we have a typical mace. As you can see, it's one layer of the three-quarter inch, three-eighths inch, excuse me, closed cell foam. Very flexible. And at the very tip, of course, six inches of flexibility at the tip. Why this is, is as soon as it contacts somebody, this is going to bend down and take the rest of it this way. We're afraid of a face shot to somebody's eyes, or what we're most commonly worried about being protected. And later we'll show you how an eye protection is made, and some of the examples that we have for those. Here we have an axe. And this was on, this head was on the, the dragon hill. Now you can see here, this is what we have classified as a polearm, if you look at the length of the shaft. And again, if you look at any of our axes, it has one inch of three-eighths, and then the two-eighth inch, three-eighths inch foam on either side, so that the head will bend. Okay, that the head will bend in contact. Let's see a full side shot of it. Full side? No, 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 other way. This way. There, yeah. As you can see, there is one, this is three layers of foam, if you look at it directly. And we'll show you how to make one of these later. From here, we have gone on to missile weapons. We have created a crossbow here. This crossbow has been designed several times, and uh, the design will be uh, modified at a later date. We have some that have a magazine and with a shotgun 
feed that pulls back your string and hooks into the latch. As you can see here, we can draw it back. And if you look at it close at the uh, trigger mechanism, cameraman, can you come in closer? This is a simple design and can be made just about anywhere if you have just a hacksaw and can be fired and such. All right. Now we've gone on to a bow. This bow is to represent the fire small naga hide rolls of naga hide rolled in some duct tape. The most common strip kick me used is nine inches of naga hide in a roll, and thus will fit into the end of the firing tube of the bow, drop down. This is to simulate pulling an arrow with the bow, and then drawn, and then the string will be let go, and the bolt will fly out. Let's see are any other examples of items. Okay, now we will go on to materials. We suggest that uh, we have found this to be the most common and plentiful place for foam. This is in the U District. Here's the address and the telephone number of this company. It is close to Ravenna Park in the University District. Found on page 256 in the Seattle White Pages. All right. I'm going to need that later. But anyhow, the next that we ask you to use is sure tape. This is the duct tape that we found to last the longest for any of the weapons in GOA. It's most resilient and the best used to go against the sunlight if you've left your weapon out in the sun. Okay? Another way of noticing the sure tape symbol is within the roll of the duct tape inside. It is labeled within it as well as the duct tapes are allowed to be used in different colors again sure tape has many of them you can most commonly find this at any of your local Fred Meyer stores or hardware stores we ask that you use sure tape and none of the Kindle or Tucker duct tape we have found it to be used on our weapons and has made them too heavy so from here we will go on to the tools that you will need is a simple yardstick. Yardsticks are most commonly found to be one and one quarter inch in width. And a pair of scissors. Of course your duct tape. And your foam. Another thing that we ask is that we have different lengths and types of PVC that can be used in a weapon. For a dagger, it can be no longer than, let's see if I can do this right. What about Naga height? We'll do that later. Okay. Will be 15 inches for a dagger. Two feet for a short sword. And three feet for a long sword. Anything, you may also use gray PVC for weapons of three feet and longer, such as your staves, axes, maces, pole arms. This is a sturdier PVC, but there are certain rule clarifications. If you look on your pages in your rule book, that there are, you cannot use a shield, only but a buckler, with PVC of this type. So if you use it as a three foot weapon, it's not necessarily used very well if you like using a shield. At a later date we will show you how to fill it full of sand and thus bend your PVC piping. Oh well, CPVC. CPVC and your gray PVC. These two have two different names and they're both classified as half inch PVC. This is CPVC, which has a vanilla color, and your gray PVC, 
which is called PVC. So if I haven't said it already. All right. From here, we will go on showing you how to make a short sword. And uh, I seem to have thrown the length of two feet of CPVC tubing. Okay. Up, up. There we go. All right. Now, what I have done here is you take first, take your foam. Okay, around you might want to come up. Note that the, none of the PVC was white PVC. It was vanilla colored or gray colored. Yes. Not white. White PVC is illegal, for we have found it has come to in different thicknesses of the outer diameter. And if it's too thin, white PVC has a tendency to shatter, where this will bend before it breaks. And you may also use a black PVC, which is recommended as well. I have different colors of PVC, but again, do not use white PVC. Okay, when you're making a blade of a sword, take the yardstick. Now this is going to be making a half inch C PVC weapon. If you use a gray PVC weapon, the, the thickness of the, the, the blade areas of your sword must be an inch and a half, and the side, mm, here. You can draw a picture on this. Uh, let me show you a, let me show you an example. Oops. Oh, excuse me, corrections. No black PVC. For whatever reasons, we don't allow that. What was that again? Black PVC. No black PVC. No black PVC. That's a correction for the last of the last statement. Yes, yes, excuse me, please. Okay, again, when you make a short sword, these here, all four of these, your blade and your side pieces are all an inch and a quarter for C PVC. If this is made out of half inch PVC, the gray, you are looking at to make this side piece two inches, the blade ends an inch and a half. You may also, if you do like to do so, oh, I don't have an example at this moment. So we will continue onward. Now we will continue onward how to make a short sword. Take your yardstick, place it on your foam, draw lines alongside of it, and you want to do four of them for a sword. Now this is to make a two-bladed sword, and later in this video we will create a one-bladed sword, or perhaps in a later video, <laughs> depicting on our time tonight. Alright, I have got my four drawn out. Now when you do a hilt, keep going. Okay. And when you do a hilt, you will take your roll of duct tape. Now this is not a standard hilt and will not be allowed to be. You can make it as special and unique according to your own designs. May I see one of the normal short swords? No, it's not a normal short sword. Ah, here it is. This is more of a Roman style. And as you notice, this is a roll of duct tape. And we take your roll of duct tape and place it on your phone, draw a circle around, and you're going to need three of these circles. Now this is to make a basic short sword for, or a long sword, or a dagger, or a great sword in GOA, or what we like to call it now of roll haven. So I have one circle cut out, and I will go about cutting out another circle and as well as these blades. Take your normal scissors, don't use your mom's good scissors, she might get angry at you, which mine has often. Okay. It's action. Now? Oh great, okay. Now we're gonna go on to, I've already pre-cut my four pieces of the sword, short sword. I've also cut out two round circles for the hilt. 
Now you're going to want to cut these in half, as I am doing here, folding it in half, and then cutting it, which is sometimes difficult for some people, hopefully nobody watching this video. Okay, next you're also going to want to take your PVC, or C PVC, excuse me, half inch, and you're going to want to place it down the middle. This here is, let's see here, a little over one half inch in thickness. And what you want to do is take this, measure the length, find the middle. The easy way of finding the middle is here. And then cutting off half the diameter of this on both sides. And uh, can somebody cut me out one more of these blades? And here's an extra pair of scissors. Okay. And next here, we'll take our duct tape. And thus, take these and place them on our sword. And it's soon to be built. I can find the. Ah, there it is. The starting of our duct tape. As a new roll, it is normally hard to find. Take your duct tape. When you're doing a roll of duct tape, place the two fingers here at each corner. Take these two fingers. Next, take your thumbs, catch a little bit of the duct tape, and then roll or fold your duct tape to make a roll so it's sticking on both sides. You're good at rolling stuff, yes. Yes, yes. Takes many years of, we won't go into that. So, then place your hand here where you would like the hat hilt to be. You can make the hilt up here. So it gives you two hands to be used or you can do a one-handed hilt which will be brought down a little bit further. And I will make this one-handed Short sword. Now we'll do the other side here. Again. And then, as you can see here. Then, again, we'll create another roll here place here, and here, place the other half along here, and then do again on the other side. Some people like to use scissors, I like my teeth, it is faster. Some people don't appreciate the taste, I find it rather enjoyable. Okay, so now we have a hilt. As you can see, it is three layers thick, a 3 8 inch closed cell phone. Then, we want to take our Naga hide, which earlier I was listing off some of the materials that you will be needing. This is Naga hide or vinyl, and you can buy it at any fabric store. It is generally sold by the yard, but you can buy it in any width that they will allow you to do so. This is what also we make the bolts for our bows, as well as if you line this with the foam on this side, you can make leather armor out of it, as you'll see in the rules. Okay, the next what you want to do is cut strips of this, at least a half inch, no more than a half inch. I'll show that later. Next time we do a video like this, let's pre-cut this, so we don't waste as much time. Okay, take two strips, preferably, cut them in half, find the half here. So that you're looking at about four to six inches of naga hide.
first you want to pre-duct tape your hilt. I'm doing this fast and fairly sloppy. But as one of your first weapons, I would recommend to do it as fast, perhaps, or don't worry about your aesthetic, please, for it will be your first in a later date. Oh, we have our lovely model here. If she would have had taken our, this is vinyl, if she would have taken the foam, the 3 8 inch closed cell foam, and thus placed it underneath here, and then tied it up, it would be thus leather armor in our system. Okay. Thank you, our lovely model. Okay. So, onward we will go. So, take it, fold it. Again, also, within these weapons, you are not allowed to duct tape more than twice on one in any visual areas. On the hilt and the handle, it does not matter. But on the sword blades, you may not duct tape more than twice on any striking area. Again, roll up your duct tape. Make both sides sticky. Place it on the edge here. This is going to reinforce your hilt from falling off because the foam is not as rigid. Okay. You're going to want to do this on all four corners. Thus take your naga hide, go along, Oops. place on all four corners again. More notably to take the plastic side, not the cloth side, and place it next to the rolled duct tape to give it the best grip. So it will not allow the hilt to fall off the blade when it is struck in combat. You want action? Ah, baka. Anyhow, now that our what do you call you? producers have asked for action, I guess I will have to talk more. Okay, so we're going along here, trying to get our tilt not to fall off. Perhaps our resident storyteller, Ral, will tell us a few stories while I'm preparing our short story. While Ral is fixing his hair in the next room, we will go on. Also, within the system, we ask that you, all strikes count, no matter how light. If you've looked at the weapons in the foam, if you are struck by any of these weapons, it is so flexible, and if you are hit, it feels very light, where normally you're getting two inches of steel into your flesh, it will feel but merely a slight graze. So we are asking of you, when you do combat, that all hit all hits count no matter how light. And remember, safety is a full-time job amongst all of us who play here at Royal Haven. A lot of the reasons why we want to stay with the foam weapons instead of the Kendo Shinai weapons is that we would like to promote role-playing, not people feeling scared of combat. When you're scared of combat, role-playing not one thing that is on your mind, besides getting hurt. Now, in this system we have armor, which 
which I will show you an example of in just one moment here. You can do out of bucket plastic, cardboard and duct tape, as well as your naga hide and foam. We ask that plastic armor, as well as steel armor, we do not recommend for it is too heavy. And that does not, you are not able to feel a shocking blow through one of these weapons. If you're fighting in a light system, which this is, that the, uh, you will not feel a blow through armor, such as this chainmail I have on, I sometimes have problems feeling a blow through the armor and must be told by my opponent that I have been hit. So, with next what we will do is we're going to stick foam inside here and here so that when we flex our weapons and the tips do not collapse on the edge of our PVC and cut through the foam. And thus you're going to strike an opponent with a piece of plastic, which is very stiff and will hurt a great amount, but will not probably break any bones or other of such items upon your body. Although we do recommend that you wear eye protection, whether it be ski goggles or metal mesh that we, each, we uh, will provide for you here at the game or that you make yourself. So. So save, wish all no. We will thus kill one of our producers with a drop of the scissors, and thus she is Vanilla. We will go on from here. We have now one, two, three, four, five pieces of our foam. This is a foam of one and one quarter inch in width, or the diameter of a yardstick. If you are to use half inch gray PVC, we recommend that you take six inches strip of the one and a quarter, snip it, then fold it in half. Time is difficult and the phone won't cooperate with you. Nice music, nice music, I swear. <laughs> Thanks to our sound man and his choice of. Already, it gets better. Oh, does it? Okay, great. Next, we'll be writing the large soundtrack of Barry Manilow. Okay. Take as many rolls as you would see fit to make your middle of your foam that you will insert into your PVC. We'll take this, place six inches, take two inches if need be, mark it, and place it inside the PVC. Okay, so when you're looking at half inch gray, you will take this, place it inside. As well, you will be doing this in the CPVC as well. But in this case, you will be taking it and cutting it in half, which we happen to have from our cameraman, one half of this strip at six inches. Yes, I need the other half, thank you. You will then in roll duct tape around this, again, and thus, but before you place it inside the PVC, take your scissors or any knife and cut out the edge so that it is round inside here so that it does not cut your inserted foam. And then place it in here at two inches. If you use a twisting motion going inside, it'll place a little bit easier for you. As well, when you take this, one part will be flatter. This is about a half inch, where this is three eighths. Take your half inch, and this will be your blade flat. This will be your cutting edge. So take this, sight down it, 
make sure that it is in line with your hilt so that your blade will come straight up instead of off to the side and then up. Then you will have a cross tilt. Instead of holding it flat like this, it will be off to the side and your blade will be here. Some people like this, but I don't find it preferable. Never seen a sword built like that, but some people like it. Then, take a strip of duct tape, place it around your weapon, thus to hold this in, so it does not fall out and is in place where your blade will be. Then, you want to take two strips of duct tape, properly about four inches, and place it on both sides of your cutting edge, not on the flat of the sword. Again here. Then take your naga hide, cut a one fourth inch strip, about four inches, no less than four, and no more than five. You can fudge a little bit either way, but no less than four inches. Take your naga hide, take it in half, measure it, make sure it is at least four inches. This is four and a half, which is okay. in here and then you will cover this over again with duct tape and this is about the only area of the cutting sword that will be able to allow multi layers of duct tape again once you have this duct tape try to tear it off as much as possible for when this breaks your tip will break and you'll have to do a new blade if you do an ornate blade such as the Chris dagger that I've shown you you'll be fairly upset if you have to redo it so again make sure that it does not break free of your duct tape on either side if you are doing a staff or an axe make sure that you put these strips on all four sides if you would like to you, should, you could also do it on a sword but it's not necessarily needed for only the flat, the edge, the blade edge is the only place that needs reinforcement because it gets bent this direction or this direction and it's not usually used as a weapon this direction. Okay, next we will go on to doing the, the hilt of the sword again. If you are going to do a fancy blade such as the Chris dagger or of any other type, what you want to do is take, make a strip first, and you can make it as wide as you would like it to be, but here I've made it just one size over. Now, if you are to do the Chris dagger, you can go, if I remember right how it was done, it goes up, this way, mm -hmm. then down. As you can see, it does not go underneath the one and one quarter and then back over and then over. Now some people what they like to do for some blades they like the diamond tip is something you can do again no less than one quarter you can come up like this and then back down thus giving you more of a angled blade into a point which also looks good which is something we did in the Black Sword of Mario's, which hopefully you'll see. Ah, here we go. Again, here we took it an inch and a half, which this is gray PVC, and then we went, and this diameter from here up to here is an inch and a half, and it goes up to two inches, thus giving you an angle blade, and then down here to give you more of a solid tip. Again, 
All right, show you that. If you want to do fancy blades, it does very well if you do so that way and will be kept legal. Okay, now what I've done here is taken duct tape, rolled it here and up here on both sides. Then you will take your blade, take the bottom edge of it. What you're going to want to do is such of the black blade here. You do not want to attach anything to the hilt. Uh, a better example would be one of the Roman short swords, which I have right here. If you attach it to your hilt, your hilt will come down when it's struck by a blade and will eventually tear. We know this will happen, so what we've done here is duct taped the under half of the blade so that they do not attach and will flex. Here we'll do this by taking the bottom end, straightening it out here, of the blade side, fixing it here, flopping it down here, then back down, and thus will give you your blade to be separate from the hilt of your sword. Make sure that it will be straight. Sometimes you might ha end up with a blade that weaves back and forth here. You want to keep it as straight, so take, aim your eye down, make sure that it's straight. This one is fine. Do it again on the other side. Nice about the mice in this kitchen. Quite helpful. Again, we go here, here and up here. Now you can either fill this gap with foam such as this or what I like to do is take your duct tape, roll it again, placing it in the middle of the foam here as you can see and then squeezing them together and then what you've got it here, quickly duct taping it. The duct tape will come off your fingers. Placing it here, holding it so it does not separate. And here. Next, you take your duct tape, place it along the side of the blades. One thing you might want to do Just take your duct tape, go from your PVC to the outer edge. No. Okay, now I have done it on all the blade edges of the sword. Now a few things you might or would like to do at this time is to do some unique designs coming up here with the tip, getting your design out, drawing it on your sword. Another thing you might would like to do is to come down in the lower parts where somebody will not be struck and you may do designs of perhaps teeth down here or you might want to just come down to a diamond tip or if you like the Conan design you can come down here and put a nice curve into it to give you definition of your blade instead of having just a simple blade. So now I will continue on to doing the tip, here, here, okay, so now I have cut out the tip and I have my blade. Next, we will take rolls of duct tape. Now we're going to do the side edges of your sword so you do not have raw PVC extended. Okay. And then take your piece of foam. Now remember, this area here at the very tip of your sword can be no in must have an inch and gap here. 
then make a tip. There. Flip your side over. I would suggest that you do duct tape in short strips in the very beginning. As such as I have been doing this for five long years, I have grown accustomed to doing very long strips and doing it very quickly, for I have done a lot of weapons. The majority of them are for, for GOA purposes. Okay. Again, make sure that this is in the middle. Here and here. If you have exposed PVC, such as this might have been, this middle part might be off to the side exposing PVC and you do not want that. Okay. There. Now if you like to add foam to give definition on this edge, perhaps filling out this whole bottom part and placing runes or some type of monster face for a hill, you may do so. But the minimum that you can do for covering the side of your foam. Oops. Is an inch and a quarter and for half inch PVC, two inches. Okay. Next. Placing your sword, take your duct tape, fold down the edges here. Being very careful not to wrinkle. Here, and then here, okay. Now something you might want to do is angle the tips here. This will make it smoother. When you place your duct tape here, and then down, so that you've sealed the tip here at the end of your sword, as you can see, the tip is here. Now remember, on a blade can be no more than one layer of duct tape in the diameter. You can have little bits of overlapping duct tape that's fine, but overall can only be one layer of duct tape. Uh, and then, do the other side. exposed edge. Now with this, you'll take your duct tape, cut it in half, or tear it in half, very long strip of it. Now you're going to place it from this tip, from here to here, see if I can get it on. Okay. What you're going to want to do is get the middle of the strip in the middle of the foam. Okay. Ah. Okay. What you're gonna to want to do is make your fingers into this, placing them down onto your foam and then running it down. Thus bending your duct tape evenly on both sides. Okay. Again you want to do it to the other side. Place it here. 
here. Now this is the reason why we do this way instead of lapping it over. Is that it allows for a nice smooth edge that does not get caught on somebody's costume or ornaments on their costume as well as it makes the blade last longer. And overall it generally looks a little bit better. Take your time with these weapons. Don't go very fast. If they're your first, you'll eventually get the hang of it and speed will increase. Okay. Now for your handle here. You can only it can be no less than half of the PVC covered. 50%. As we do so, we will take a strip that is the length of the handle. Cut it in half. Then take your roll duct tape, place it on each side. Then once completely covered in duct tape, we'll give you a handle that looks some similar to this. We ask that you completely foam the handle, which you may do so with two foam, placing the, again, taking these uh, off, and taking this, placing it inside your tube foam. This is an option. This is an option that you may do. If you like a fuller roundel, round, rounder handle, okay, and that's giving you a rounder handle instead of the flat handle here. You may wrap this with leather or other ornate items. You may place gems inside your hilts, but not along the blades. Again, we can take, if somebody will give me an exacto knife, Okay, now next we're going to show you how to decorate your sword with colored duct tape. If you would like, I most commonly like to find my handles to be brown, thus to make them look more like they're made out of wood. So, I go ahead and put brown duct tape on it. Now a few things I like to do is what I've seen, wind hills they'll have rivets in them. I'll take my gray duct tape. Take a strip of it. Now what you want to do is do this on a cutting board or a piece of wood which your duct tape will adhere to will not permanently stay on. Then take a section of it, cut it in half again. What I'm trying to do is make something that looks like a rivet. So do here, here, here. Now I'll place it here. Oops. Now these are to represent rivet heads, which I like to do. If I had a little bit more forethought, I would have done something that may have looked a little bit better. Again, for a wooden handle, rivets are a nice thing to do. If you like to take black, you can place that on your hilt. Such as the cross or the one behind me, you can see some representations of colored duct tape on a weapon. Okay, now, then again, once you do it, you can do very ornate designs as well. It takes a little bit of red here. When you do, you can do ruin, ru, runes or words on your blades. 
Again, let's do just a simple diamond shape. And you can place that again on your sword. And in this case, it does not have a tendency to rub off, as you can see my finger rubbing up and down it. The colored duct tape seems to stay on for quite a while, and thus will give you quite a while of a nice sword. Eventually your duct tape will weather and look a little bit on the worn side, thus you can rebuild a new weapon and make it look again, something ornate and beautiful. Okay, the next thing I would like to show you is how to do an axe head. Axe heads are most uh, liked by most people. Ah! And I'll show you really quickly how to do one of those, and then this tape will pretty much will be over. Take three. Let's see the bucket hill. Just show it to us. Too much. Okay, hang on. I need this. Where's the other thing? See another piece of glass? It's kind of rounded on the outer edge. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, here it is. Okay. So. Okay, here. Let me show you. I'll, I'll say something about it. Are you still recording? Yeah. Okay, here is an ideal hill. This is a basket shaped hill that covers you on both sides. It's fairly nice. For hand shots are legal in the system since they are only foam weapons. So, this here is just a piece of foam tubing that I placed over a CPVC, half inch. And now I'm going to make an axe head for it. Out of this axe head, what I've done here is taken a piece of cardboard. First thing I did was made my design. Now, when you do that, you're going to do three pieces. Two pieces will be your... One will be your leading large piece. Next will be the half size. That will go down. You want at least an inch of 3 8 inch foam on this. Again, then you'll place both of these on both either side, giving you three layers thick. And then it will be placed on your your staff or polearm. Again, next thing you will want to do after taking this, I would advise to tape the whole head first, making it a separate union, then taking roll duct tape, putting it here, placing these together, then taking naga hide, putting a strip on both edges here and here, as well as across because your axe head will be going up, down, left, to right. And at that point, I have nothing else to be said, and this is the end of the tape. So, happy weapons building, and hopefully we'll see you out in the battlefield soon. Sick of getting hit with the weapons. So make some real ones. <laughs> <laughs>